obviously you're appreciative of any of these opportunities that create memories for these young guys. Uh, for us, there's the added uh, opportunity. We are, we are really not over uh, Friday night. We did not put our best foot forward collectively, not individually, but collectively we did not put our best foot forward. And so we would have preferred to come down here four and oh, but we are what our record says we are. We're three and one and very anxious um, and a bit unusual in that. Yes, there was travel after a practice yesterday morning. There's a practice here. It's a little bit truncated, an hour in one spot, an hour in another spot, kind of like the NCAA tournament practices. Uh, but the other thing is that we've had three days to prepare. So we were off Saturday, uh, practice Sunday, terrific workout Sunday, Monday and Tuesday to play an extraordinarily athletic, older uh, Memphis team that will challenge us on the backboards, in our one-on-one -on -one defense, and in our transition defense, areas that we did not do well Friday night against Long Beach State. If you guys want, we'll take questions for the players first. That way they can go get ready for practice. All right, yeah. Uh, James Hawkins, Detroit News. I guess we'll start off for uh, for Terrence and Olivia. I guess could you guys just describe what the mood has been like coming off the loss to Long Beach State? And I guess just what's the mindset going into this tournament? Uh, I feel like we just more locked in on all fronts. Uh, like Coach Phil just said, we didn't play our best on the defense end specifically with one-on-ones and, you know, rotations and offensive rebounds. So, you know, that was a big focus coming in to this game on Wednesday is just focus on those things as well as executing on offense more, especially against the uh, seeing zone. You know, Memphis might play zone. So, you know, I just feel like we've been more locked into the details uh, each day leading up to this uh, game on Wednesday versus Memphis. Next question. Anybody have anything for the players? Yeah, Olivier. Uh, <clears throat> hey, Tony Garcia from the Detroit Free Press. Uh, I think you had a pretty good time here last year, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I, th I think Tennessee won the tournament. Uh, can you just uh, look back at that, how, how how that went, and obviously a new, a new team, a new season, unlikely what that carries over, but just good vibes, I suppose, yeah? Yeah, it's uh, like Coach said, it's a blessing to be here. I mean, it's, it's a great opportunity to get to come here two years straight. Uh, the environment is great. It, it resembles, you know, a tournament, March Madness, or, you know, that, that late season season intensity. You know, you have to play three back-to-back -back games. You have to look at each game as a championship game. You have to take each game seriously because every game is the most important game you play in a, in a setting like this. So just from last year's experience, you know, I, I one thing I keep saying to everybody is every game is a championship game and we have to look at each game as, as the most important game we have. So yeah, definitely the experience last year was a lot of fun and it was it was great to, you know, win it. But this is a whole new whole new group of teams and a whole new team that I'm playing with. So hopefully we can make it a a whole new fun experience. <laughs> Lindsay Buden with the Michigan Daily. What have you guys seen from Memphis that you guys are looking, you know, to looking for and what might po pose a challenge? Olivier, we'll start with you. Their physicality, like Coach spoke on, touched on earlier. You know, they, they're an older team. They're very athletic. They're, you know, a bunch of guys that, that have been around, have been playing basketball for a long time at the, you know, Division One level bunch of guys that compete very hard, physical, you know, they're going to crash the glass, run the floor. Individual matchups are going to be very important. And then just everybody having each other's backs and knowing that we're going to have to be on a string on the defensive end, on the offensive end. We are going to have to execute our own principles and do our best to make them play our game. T, do you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, really just what O said and just add on to that, probably just taking a one-on-one -on -one challenge. They have a lot of great scorers from all different positions and you know we have to take that one-on-one -on -one challenge and you know say that this guy's not going to score me so we just got to defend uh each each possession and you know our brother's gonna have our backs but just taking a one-on-one -on -one challenge thank you does uh anybody have anything else for the players 
I got one more. It's uh, it, it's also for Phil, so maybe I guess the players could answer first and then also for Phil. I'd like to know everyone's thoughts. Uh, obviously, uh, largely it was seven guys who rotated last last game, maybe maybe eight uh, with George Washington at the, at the end for a few minutes. Uh, the rotation is tighter, three games back to back to back. I guess, can you say from a player's perspective how to handle uh, lops, those a number of minutes in consecutive nights and then and then fill after just things that you need to be aware of and just ma- managing that with uh with it with a tighter rotation uh you know really taking care of our bodies again with chris but other than that it's just having the next man up mentality like everybody's just got to be ready you don't know where your number is going to be called and specifically with these three back-to-back games your number most likely will get called because of the minute load and you know the, the intensity of each game so you know, I feel like each player just needs to be ready to, uh, for when they come in and just be locked in on both ends of the floor. Uh, yeah, like T. Will said, everybody has to be ready to step up, uh, be a star in their role. But then also it's very important for us to understand that we're not here to play three games. We're here to play one game. And that one game right now is Memphis. And then whatever comes next comes next. But we're here to play one game at a time. There's no need to worry about load management for the next game. There's no need to worry about what your minutes are going to look like tomorrow. We have to do what we have to do on Wednesday. And then whatever comes after that is is what we get ready for after we handle business. Yeah, for T. Will, you were a senior in high school when Michigan was here in, in 2019 and won. Uh, how do you remember watching that stretch and how much did that influence? That was the, I think, fifth, sixth, and seventh games of Coach Howard uh, as the head coach. What did those games watching um, help to kind of push you maybe to commit to Michigan? Yeah, um, I feel like the that tournament that year, I feel like that was the biggest thing that made me commit just because Coach Howard was a new coach at the time and, you know, he really didn't have any – I didn't really have experience to, like, look at him in the college center versus, you know, good teams. And then he went into the tournament and he blew each team out the water and it just made it clear that he's ready for college basketball. He's ready to be the coach at Michigan. So, you know, once I saw that he was prepared and once I saw that, you know, he's making his players better and, you know, that just made me and my family trust him even more. So, you know, I feel like that was one of the biggest things that helped me committed just seeing him, you know, show that about himself and that he's ready for this type of environment. All right. Thanks, fellas. We'll let you guys go. Coach, if you could uh, go back to Tony's question about the minute management, uh, that would be great. Well, the first is a is a bigger picture uh, item. This is very, very unusual. Right. It only happens one other time all year, and that would be the Big Ten tournament. Even the NCAA tournament, you have a day off and they manage your hours and if you have 30 hours or 36 hours between games. But so this really is a thought process for the Big Ten tournament. Different than the Big Ten tournament, if we were not successful on Wednesday, we have to play Thursday and we have to get better because it's November 21st. Uh, At the, the end of the year, there's even more tension because you could collect your uniforms if you lose in the Big Ten tournament early in that um, early in that session. So, much like Olivier said, this is about winning on Wednesday. And if that takes seven guys, then that's what it's going to take. If we stretch it out and you you manage to uh, maneuver minutes for a George Washington or a Yo-Yo, uh, if Jalen Wellen is ever coming back. He is coming back, but he if he was to come back this tournament, which he's not, but those kind of guys are the next stretch in the rotation. Um, so there's not a thought process for tomorrow to say, well, we really have to hold off Olivier's minutes because will he get back on Thursday? No, you have to have faith in Chris Williams. You have to have also faith in the in the players. And there is an advantage kind of to there's an advantage to playing at night, which we are, if you follow the schedule out, um, there's also a disadvantage because I mean, it is as beautiful a day as you can imagine. And they're looking outside at people sitting around pools and sitting on beaches and that kind of thing. They have to, they have to sacrifice now 
so that they can enjoy it later. But um, I'm not concerned. John Sanderson has done a wonderful job in making sure these guys are well conditioned. Chris Williams will have them respond through cold tubs, hot tubs, contrast baths, whatever it takes to have everybody ready uh, for Thursday, either at five o'clock or six thirty or six or seven thirty. I'm not sure of the times on Thursday, but um, you just take it for this game. We we want to win our next game, which is Wednesday. Any additional questions for Coach? Yeah, I have one. Hey, Phil, Andrew Khan, I'm live. Uh, did Juwan make the trip? Juwan is here. Well, and I would be... say, I would say, the economy at Atlantis has has uh, welcomed him. It <laughs> <laughs> will he be on the bench in this event? I don't know that. Okay, and I'm not trying to be coy. I, yeah, I understood. There are. Anybody have anything else? He has also watched as much Memphis tape as as anybody else. Uh, it's my scout, but he is fully engaged. Fully engaged. Thanks. Yeah, I have a couple. Uh, James Hawkins, Detroit News. Uh, Phil, after the loss to Long Beach State, you said you weren't really you weren't really going to know till Sunday. I guess how the team responded to that loss. I guess just what have you seen from the team since then? That's a really great question. Uh, I thought Sunday's practice was was really good. Uh, yesterday, we practiced in the morning before we got on the plane. And so part of me, and I'm not a conspiracy guy or I'm not a, a glass half-empty guy. Some of it, for me, has to do with, did we learn our lessons from Friday? Or was there the excitement about leaving campus and playing in this terrific tournament? Um, I hope it's, I hope that we learned our lesson, but I don't, I don't know that for sure. I'm not saying we haven't, I'm not saying we have the preparation on Sunday was for Memphis and the preparation on Monday was for Memphis, but then you're traveling. So has it really, 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 uh, settled in? I will, I will raise my hand and say to you, Last night we were on our way to a team dinner and I was looking at my phone, scrolling through some scores. And I saw that Long Beach lost last night. And I also saw and made everybody aware that the young guy to put 35 on our heads, all of our heads on Friday had five last night. So that's got to, that's got to irk you. It really does irk you that they lost last night. So um, the challenge is here is Memphis What's the lesson learned? When the ball goes in the air, we'll find out. I guess just sticking with the lessons learned, I guess, what do you hope the team learned, like, defensively? I guess, what what have you been harping on, you know, the last couple of days that you guys need to correct or fix if you want to make a run in the tournament? <laughs> Guard someone? Yeah. Uh, going back to St. John's, our shot challenges in the St. John's games were extraordinary. Uh, our... And in the St. John's game, the Achilles heel, everybody would say was 29 offensive rebounds. But think about it. If they had 29 offensive rebounds, that, that means they missed a lot of shots. Long Beach didn't miss shots. Now, some of those shots were impossible to miss because they were at the front of the rim. So individual accountability, uh, our rotations, as Terrence Williams said, were basically non-existent. And uh a little bit of that the fear factor like am i good enough can i guard my man well there can be none there can be no trepidation against memphis because memphis has a score multiple scores because they're going to play nine or ten guys and they all come in with this idea of they have a scores mentality so uh the lesson that's learned is you're responsible for guarding and not walking out and saying, and I did have somebody say that to me uh, Saturday or Sunday. Uh, just a, a person that I met, uh, I think it was somebody at, at church when I went to church on Sunday. They said, man, it was great. You scored 86 points. I was like, yeah, but no, that, that's not so great because unless it was 86, 85, then I would say, yeah, that was great. But when the other team scores more than you, um, 
that's not great offense. So um, lesson learned is guard your man. Guard your man. Anybody have anything else for coach? I guess just <clears throat> one quickly, sorry, one more. Tony Garcia, uh, Detroit Free Press. Is being a Division One coach uh, officially as easy as your son made it look? Uh, got a big upset, looked like. That was really cool. Uh, and here's what I've sent to him, and his mother was with me when we were watching that game on Saturday. Uh, I am absolutely positively blown away by how calm he looks. He just... Uh, he's got it. He's got it. And uh, the bigger deal, the bigger deal, and I'm not lecturing, the bigger deal is that they won last night against Howard, right? The FAU thing. And, and look, my phone blew up. My phone blew up. Not just his phone. Not only my son's phone. And so I knew he had to deal with that. So the only thing that I said to him, and again, it's the other world. They stayed in Miami on, on Saturday night. They took a mid-morning flight back. They did the airport shuttle thing. Like there's no charter. There's no, you know, like they're, they're going like every man. They got back to campus. Howard was already on their campus that had already practiced. Bryant then went and practiced. And then they had to go win a game where everybody's telling you this is the greatest thing that's ever happened in the game of the basketball since bird and magic, right? Like that's the kind of thing people are saying to, to my son and his players and for them to go out and win for 40 straight minutes against an older team at Howard, that, that, that showed me a lot. And uh, if I could just for a moment, Matt Painter, and Tom Izzo reached out to my son. So uh, anybody out there that wants to say it's this awful, awful, uh, mm -mm. those are real dudes, man. Those are real dudes. They're friends of mine, but for them to take the time to reach out to my son with all that's going on, with all the games and everything like that, I'll never forget that.